Hi, and welcome back to Glossbox writing automated Java tests using WebDriver. Today we're going to have a look at Hamcrest assertions. We're going to see what Hamcrest assertions are and why you would write Hamcrest assertions, and we're going to see how they're different from JUnit's assertion library. So let's begin by navigating to the Java test site and going through a really basic journey that we're going to try and write an automation script for and then write Hamcrest assertions for that script. So the journey we're going to automate is actually pretty simple. We're just going to click on all of these four links and then assert something on the page. So by default when we end up on this index page we're just going to assert this title here. Then we will navigate to adoption. On the adoption page we are going to do the same thing by asserting on the page title. And finally when we go to the about to reduce repetition we're just going to assert on the URL. So let's have a look at the test. Now I've already written a really basic test to already test some of this but we are using JUnit assert methods instead. So what are we doing in this test? Well the first thing we're doing is creating an instance of driver using Firefox as a browser. We are then navigating to our Java test site. We are then getting the text of the page so in this case we're getting this text here and the way we're getting it is simply by doing a class name to get the content i.e. to get this pane here. So if I just do a quick inspect element on it I'm doing a get by class content so we're getting effectively this pinkish box here and then looking for tag names by h1 and there's only one in there i.e. the title and then getting the text and then assigning that value to page text which is a string then we're just doing a simple JUnit assertion to assert that the page text contains the string welcome we also have this error message to say if for some given reason we don't see this string inside the page text then just give us this message here we then move forward to click on the adoption link and do the same thing by this time asserting on the page title and finally we'll click on the about link and just do a quick assert false to check that the adoption does not appear as part of the current URL. In other words, once we've clicked on about we don't see adoption here to confirm that we are not on the adoption page. So it's actually a really simple test, nothing too complicated. So let's just run this just to make sure this works first. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and the last thing we did we, is uh, we closed the browser by quitting the driver altogether. So nothing too difficult here. Now before we start looking at Hamcrest assertions, let's play around with this a bit. Let's try and fail these assertions on purpose and see what we get. So here all I'm going to do is put in a 1 so now this assertion is going to fail. Naturally when an assertion failed it stops the test right there and then. So if we now rerun this and see what we get. So the test has failed and at best it's given us the error message that we hard coded into the assertion i.e. it's given us this message here. So it's not too bad, it's failed but it's failed gracefully in that we know where the failure is and we know what the failure could potentially be. Uh, to be more specific it's just given us a message that we provided. However what happens if we take this message out? So if I take this out and try and rerun the test again and close that. We can see that this time we don't have an error message but at the same time we don't really have anything useful to go on. So if I were to say click on this it tells me exactly what the failure is and in this instance we know what the failure is but let's just assume we didn't and we just kind of stumbled across this failure. We don't actually get a lot of information which is to say the very least kind of poor from a testing perspective. If you're writing say assertions in your test and when something fails you know something's failed but you don't actually get a sensible message 
a message that you haven't provided. It's not very helpful for us. So in the instance where we actually had a message, we got a message back in that we had an error message here and we got that back. Uh, that's pretty good. But in its absence, we didn't get anything. And it really doesn't help us identify what the problem is from a very high level. Now, Handcrest can actually help with that. It's pretty powerful in trying to identify what an issue is, uh, what kind of error it could possibly be, and actually give you some level of explanation as to what the error is and potentially how to resolve it. To use Hamcrest, what you need to do is actually download a jar for it. It works really well with JUnit test and it fits in really well when you try and write assertion statements for any given test. So what we now need to do is basically go ahead and actually download the jar. So to download the jar, it's quite simple, just uh, go to Google and search for Hamcrest jar download and go to the first link it says download Hamcrest Hamcrest library of matches and the one we want to download is this Hamcrest all 1.3 jar now I'm just gonna go for the latest one so at the time of recording this video the latest version is 1.3 when you have a look this version might have changed so just go ahead and download that alright so mine's downloaded so if I go to downloads now what I'm going to do is before I use it I'm just going to move it to a more sensible place so I'm just going to cut and paste it to my C drive and I'm just going to put it in here you don't have to do this uh, this is something I like to do I like to keep uh, things a little bit more organized so I've just got everything under my C drive inside my apps directory anyway going back so the first thing we need to do is actually import in the jar that's uh, relatively quite straightforward right click on your root Java project properties then go to Java build path and then add in as an external jar so I've already got it set here and now it's added it in and just OK that so now we can start using Hamcrust assertions so the first thing I'm going to do is just import in the jar. So what I want to do is just import in a static uh, and I'm going to say org dot hamcrest dot uh, core matches and just use a wildcard and import in everything else I need. And that should do it. So let's start writing a hamcrest assertion. Now, for the assert library here, the JUnit library, we've obviously got access to things like assert true, uh, assert equals, assert false, and various others, such as assert array, uh, assert null, and, and various other things. Hamcrust has similar features, but it's got a really powerful one called assert that. The assert that method uh, provides a lot of what are called matches to help match two things based on instance type, based on object type, based on values, various different patterns. So we're just going to go ahead and try and write a basic assert that and we're going to assert the page text and what we're going to do is use what's called a matcher. So in here you write what's called a matcher. A matcher is basically a validation API method that is used to do some kind of equivalence testing. So in here, if we say for the first one we're going to use is and we provide some value to is, what we're saying here is this is the value we want, page text, and we want to use the following matcher, in this case is, and we're going to pass in a value to is. So in this case we're going to say welcome to the zoo adoption center so this is actually very similar to to this really or rather if we were to say change this to something like equals these two now effectively save the same function uh, clearly this one will fail because page test will not equal welcome it will equal welcome to the zoo adoption center so let's change that back for the moment 
but equals for J unit and is for the Hamcrest assertion are similar in the way they work. But you'll see the more beauty of it now. So if I were to say to fail this on purpose, so if I say center one, we know as a fact that if I close this that this title here is Welcome to the Zoo Adoption Center and it doesn't have a one at the end. But here on purpose we've provided a one. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so it's failed. So if we close that. So here you can see that, well, before we do that, let's check where it's actually failed. So clicking on that reveals that it's failed on the Hamcrest assertion. Here you can actually see that this assertion has given us a lot more meaningful information, something we didn't ask for, something we didn't have to hard code. And it said that it was expecting this text here, i.e. this is what it was expecting, but instead this is what was found, i.e. page text. So if we change this back, this will now start passing. But the important note to take from this is that Hamcrest assertions actually provide you with a lot of information, uh, but more importantly, really basic information that helps you identify what the issue is. It's a much more easier way to get to the root cause of a failure as opposed to having just a failure, say, on the JUnit assertion library, which doesn't really tell you anything, not, not really, and you've got to dig in to find out what the failure actually was. So moving on, let's look at another assert that matcher. So if we say assert that, and this time uh, we're going to use a page text again. And this time instead of using is, we will use another one. Let's use equal to. And again, let's just enter in some dummy text. And let's run this and see what happens. So test has failed. Let's close and see what the result is. So this time it's effectively saying the same thing. It's saying this is what it was expecting, i.e. it was expecting blah, but instead it found adoption options. So let's change this back to adoption options. So again, equal to and is are similar in the way they work, uh, but they operate slightly differently. What is 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 basically a, a wrapper for other matches. If you want, you can actually pass in a matcher such as equal to to this matcher, which is, like I said, a wrapper to other matches. Now that sounds confusing, so let me show you what I mean. So here you can see we're using an equal matcher inside an is matcher. Now you would say, hold on, why why would you do this? I mean, this is clearly you needing to write more text than writing that. Uh, I mean, a lot of people might argue, what is the value in having this information if you have to write more information here? The point is, this gives you more information, but at the same time it also reads like an actual assertion. So here you can see assert that page text is equal to this value here. It's almost English readable. Here however this might not be the case. So in this instance we've used say page text right. If we did something like this it makes it a little bit more cumbersome to read. The point is Hamcrest gives you a little bit more information if something goes wrong. And the focus of writing any SSA statement should be just that. When it fails, if it fails, it should give you some meaningful information as opposed to something that doesn't really give you much. Now, Hamcrest can actually be used to do other things as well. So in this instance, let's just say here, right? What we're doing is basically checking the URL and checking that it contains adoption. So let's move away from from this check-in of contents. Let's let's look for something a little bit more instance orientated. So let's just say assert that driver dot 
get current URL and this time let's say instance of string.class so here what we're saying is we are getting the URL and we want to check that the URL that is returned is a string now some of you might be thinking why is this important well this is probably not a very good example yeah. there's really no need to check that the URL is a string we know as a fact that the URL will probably return a string but it is more important to say understand other things let's just say you've got a page object that returns some other page object so let's just say you've got when clicking on the adoption link it returns an adoption page object you can then use that to check the instance of the object that is returned in particular what type of object is returned so let's just run this test just to make sure everything still passes fantastic looks like our test passed so in this video we really didn't cover a lot in that what we did was we just wrote effectively a couple more assertions using a different assertion library i.e. Hamcrest but the important things we covered in this video is that we compared two different assertion libraries JUnit i.e. the assertion library that is provided as part of JUnit and Hamcrest another library of assertion methods when comparing the two, you can see one is a little bit more quicker to write, but doesn't really provide that much information from a failure's point of view. And the other one is probably a little bit more cumbersome to write. If if that, um, I personally don't think it's cumbersome at all. I think there's value in writing assertions which read much more easier. But more importantly, these assertions give you more information when they fail. The key thing to take away from this video is that when an assertion fails, it should provide you with not a lot of information uh, and not little information but enough information for you to be able to identify what the issue was that is one of the key punching points of writing an assertion statement otherwise what value is there in writing an assertion statement that just says look at me I'm a test I failed but I won't tell you what it is you've got to go find it yourself so if you are going to take away something from this video take away that some libraries such as the Hamcrest give you more information uh, and this is the type of assertion libraries you should be more focused towards when writing assertions in test and that's it for this video folks thanks for watching hi guys I really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you already haven't hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos which are released every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.